You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the pride. The following is a presentation of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff Sports Network. It's game time on the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff Sports Network. From Nato Clemens Arena, men's basketball action as the UAPB Golden Lions take on the Prairie View and m Panthers. Here are the starters first for the Golden Lions. 6-1 junior from Collierville, Tennessee, number one, Jalen Lynn. 6'8 red shirt senior from Starkville, Mississippi, number three, Markedrick Bell. 5'9 junior from Phoenix, Arizona, number four, Joshua Johnson. 6'8 senior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, number 12, Terrence Banyard. And a 6'5 red shirt junior from Marion, Arkansas, number 21, Sean Doss Jr. And now the starters for Prairie View AM. A 6'8 junior. From Los Angeles, California, number three, Cole in Gidgaw. A 6'3 sophomore from Houston, Texas, number 10, Jeremiah Gambrell Jr. A 6'2 senior from Ripley, Mississippi, number 11, Dwayne Cox. A 6'7 junior from Harlem, New York, number 22, Juwan Daniels. And a 6'2 red shirt junior from Austin, Texas, Number 32, Cam Mack. As many of you know, women's basketball postponed this weekend. Did not play Saturday against Texas Southern. Not playing tonight against Prairie View. She had the weekend off. So I figured, hey, she's not working. I can use the extra voice. So join me. Not necessarily making her debut, but someone making her debut as an analyst. Women's basketball coach Dawn Brown. Coach, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Should be a good time. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about this opportunity, working alongside with you and and, and, and helping the fans out understand some basketball from a coach's perspective. Absolutely. <laughs> Certainly, you'll be back in action Saturday against Grambling, Monday against Jackson State. We'll talk about that as night moves forward. When you're playing the champs in your house, what should the mindset be? Understand that they know how to win against a program that's trying to find this identity having lost for the last week or so. Well, you know, I, I definitely have to give Coach Ivory credit. They've been doing a really good job as far as competing. Uh, as soon as some of those shots fall for them um, beyond the, 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 the arch, um, I think it's going to be a very interesting game. Prairie View won a championship last year, and this is a new year, new season. So I'm, I'm sure that this is going to be a great contest. Gold lines in their home white uniforms with black lettering, black numbering with the gold trim. Prairie View in their black uniforms with white lettering and white numbers. Those lines will move left to right on your radio dial to begin this first half. You can watch tonight's game free of charge online. Go to UAPBLionsRoar.com forward slash live. Scroll down to that video tab. Audio will be first, video right under it. Click to watch tonight's game free of charge. Matt Potter, KB Burdett Jr. and Johnny Wilkins are officials tip controlled by the Golden Lions. With the chairman of the board, Eddie Fletcher, holding things down at Delta Place Radio. And women's basketball coach, Dawn Brown. I'm Dwayne Lewis. Thanks for spending part of your Monday night with us here on the UAPB Sports Network. Johnson, out top, feeds Lynn on the left wing, pulls up for three, rims out. Bell bows for the board. Ball still loose. Mark Kedrick 
Comes out with it, but stolen by Prairie View. On the run out, off the glass, up and in is Mack for the basket and a 2 nothing Prairie View lead. You know, one thing about it, Dwayne, I think that, uh, that that the Lions have done a really good job as far as attacking the basket, uh, really and truly getting those shots uh, in the perimeter. they got to do a better job as far as just capitalizing and making layups. And we talked about that as we, we have in your games as well with Coach Ivory, those point-blank shots. You don't want to miss too many of those from right at point-blank range. Those will come back to hurt you as the game goes forward. Absolutely. you got to be able to make those, knock down those shots in the paint. Ball stolen by Prairie View on the run out once again. Ball knocked away into the hands of Indiju. Pass out of bounds. It will be Golden Line basketball. Quick substitution for head coach Byron Smith as he brings in Linnell Henry, replacing Ngidgaw. So Byron Smith, no stranger to using the dead ball. The run players in and out. We'll see a lot of substitutions tonight. Two nothing. Prairie View in front, goes lines back on offense, opening two minutes of the contest. Banyard, free throw line extended, working against Daniels to Bell on the right block. Double team gets out to Lynn on the right wing. Cross court pass to Johnson. Pass deflected out of bounds, knocked away by Cox, still nine to shoot for the Golden Lions. You know, one thing about it, Dwayne, I think that, you know, getting those touches inside to our post, um, that, that does a good job as far as opening up shots uh, on the perimeter. So we really and truly got to work to get Bell the ball. Doss will throw it in in front of the Panther basket. Top of the key to Bell. Now Johnson at the top, sizing up things. Gets inside. Back out to Banyard. 16-footer. Too strong. Rebound. Prairie View. Panthers bring it to the front court with a 2-0 lead. 18-20 to play in the first half. Quick ball movement. Corner three, left side. Good by Gambrell. Panthers up 5-0. Full court pressure now by the Panthers. We get into the front court to Doss. Spin move, perhaps they call it travel. Thought his arm oh. got grabbed for the traveling violation of Panther basketball. Definitely thought that he got him on the wrist. Perhaps you quickly into the front court. With Mack at the top of the key, now in the right wing over the Cox. In the far corner, Gambrell thought about the jumper. Quick ball movement. Henry in the paint. Jumper up. No good. Banyard battle for it. The bell comes out with it. Jump ball. And it's prayer view possession on the alternating arrow. That's exactly what you want to do versus a 2-3 press. You want to move the ball as fast as you possibly can to get that defense to shift, to find those gaps and get shots up. But, you know, we got our bigs in and right in position to rebound. Daquan Morris checks in replacing Mark Hedrick Bell. Shot clock recessed to 20 for Prairie View. Gambrell almost traveled, tried to fake that three, just got the ball on the ground before traveling. Gets the return pass. Now left corner three by Daniels, too strong. Offs rebound, put back, no good. Henry the offensive board, shot no good, ball still loose. Mad scramble for it. And Banyard comes out with it for the Golden Lions. 50-50 balls are going to matter long, long distance, long time. Lynn, right wing three. Off the mark, Banyard taps it out. Doss could not save it, and it will be Prairie View basketball. 5 nothing. Golden Lions trail, 17-18 to play in the first half. Getting those shots again, like we talked about earlier, inside-out game is going to definitely open up the floor for some more scoring for us. Back in the front court, dribble handoff to Gambrell. Takes it right over the Henry screen, down the left, right wing to Cox. Back near side to Mack. And now Daniels, free throw line, quick pass to the right side. Top of the key three, off the mark by Mack. Offensive rebound by Henry. Out in the corner to Gambrell. Left corner three is good. 8 nothing start for Prairie View. Timeout head coach George Ivory. Yeah, I think that that's a good good control timeout for us to, to be able to regroup. I see we're out in the zone, so maybe we have to make some type of adjustment defensively. Third second timeout, and we will keep it here. As you mentioned, good timeout. Prairie View off to a quick start. Slow our guys down. What will be your message in trying to get, get your team just reset, refocus, calm down, and get back to playing good basketball? Absolutely. You know, sometimes when teams come out hot, you know, uh, it, it, it's hard for them to keep their momentum for the whole game. So let's just hope that that's not the case today. 
So Prairie once again showing full court pressure, 2-2-1, full court. Doss will throw it in on the floor with Johnson, Lynn, Morris, and Banyard. Pass into Johnson. 8 nothing. Golden Lions trail. And Johnson in trouble in the backcourt. Gets around a double team into the front court. Feeds Doss on the right and the left wing. Gets it back to Johnson. Long three left side. Off the mark. Out of bounds. Prairie View basketball. Johnson is definitely quick enough to break a press by himself uh, for that pull-up tray. Um, that, that's his game. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm wanting to see some of his shots fall. Prairie View now back on offense. Inside pass to Gambrell make that Henry now. Quick ball movement, top of the key three, off the mark for Gambrell. Foul and whistle inside. Loose ball foul called against Prairie View. And they'll whistle Daniels for the foul, his first, and the first foul of the night for either team. No, Prairie View isn't a, isn't a real big team. They don't look like they have, you know, a lot of size and height, but they're playing really, really hard right now. Johnson surveying the land, gets over to Doss. Now pass in front court to Lynn, quick to Morris to Banyard, reverse layup, no good. Rebound, Prairie View, we talked about it early, got to get those layups inside. Absolutely. Quick pass inside, run the floor, blocked by Morris, a foul called against the Golden Lions on the shot attempt by Daniels. Looks like Banyard whistled for the foul, his first, and the first against UAPB tonight. That will send Jawan Daniels to the free throw line. He's a 72% free throw shooter. Averaging just over 11 points, 11 and a half points, 5.1 rebounds per contest. Knocks down the first. As a team, the Panthers a 66% free throw shooting team. Of course, a dominant effort by them on Saturday, 77-31 win at Valley. Both free throws converted here. 10-0 start for Prairie View at the 16-minute mark of the first half. Johnson in trouble in the backcourt. Foul called against Prairie View. It will be Golden Lion basketball when we come back with 15-56 to play in the opening half. Golden Lions trailing 10-0 on the UAPB Sports Network. In Pine Bluff, there is more than meets the eye. Explore the new Visitor Information Center, Freedom and Blues exhibit, and the Aquatic Center. Visit one of the country's oldest historically black colleges and universities. Learn about the inspiring history of African Americans in the area and see the world's second largest bayou. Find out more about the cultural and recreational activities Pine Bluff has to offer by visiting explorepinebluff.com. Pine Bluff. It's worth exploring. Simmons Bank has a lot of pride in Pine Bluff. It's been our home since 1903, but our goal has always remained the same, to help make our customers' dreams come true. From our headquarters downtown to more than 200 locations across eight states. That's a lot of dreams coming true, and they all started right here in Pine Bluff. Simmons Bank, Pine Bluff Proud. We are the SWAC. Our heritage lifts us to great heights because my history is forged by trailblazers that motivates me today to focus on my future. We are the SWAC. We are the new trailblazers. And this is my heritage. What's with Mountain Dew? Mountain Dew is like a zip line of incredible flavor directly into your brain. Mountain Dew is like getting punched in the mouth with pure neon refreshment that creates a neural explosion sending flavor shards of electric brain pulses into your very core of being. Okay, maybe that's a little over the top, but you get the idea. The fact is, the mind-bending challenge of describing the taste of Mountain Dew is way harder than just experiencing it. That, of course, is easy. Just grab a nice cold dew, crack it open, and toss them back. Mountain Dew. Do the dew. Happy New Year from Golden Lion Athletics. We wish you and your family a healthy and prosperous 2021 year. Perfect off to the 10 nothing lead, 15 56 to play in the first half. As Dawson will get it in to Johnson. Again, full court pressure this time over man look by Prairie View defensively. 
Johnson working against Matt, gets past him, gets it out to Lynn on the right wing. He'll drive inside, pull it from 14, off the mark, tip out, tip up. Johnson fighting for for the Golden Lions, and the foul called against Henry. Prairie is doing a, a, a good job as far as limiting us to take taking one shot. We kind of like we want it done. We got to get in there and, and get some of those rebounds for some second chance points. Prairie right now rebounding a seven four. As Lynn at the top takes it left. Feeds Dawson left baseline from the battle. Traveling violation, being physical with it, but the officials seeing it differently, not dribbling between those steps, trying to power inside. Defensively right now, a stop would be really, really good for us so we can get up, get some scoring mentality going on right now. Darrell Roberts checks in for the first time for Prairie View a and Golden Lions trailing 10-0, 15-15 and counting in the first half. Corner three by Daniels, right side, no good, offensive rebound by Henry. Gets the return pass from Daniels, pump fake, travels, jump ball. Wow. Forced the arrow in the Panthers' favor. Those puppies got shuffled. So Cox will return for... Prairie View A&M. Inbounds pass to Morris. Knocked away into the hands of Doss. Now he's trapped. Knocked away like the contact right in front of us. Stolen by Prairie View. Johnson tries to take it back and does so for the Golden Lions. The ball knocked away once again. And they're saying it will be Prairie View basketball. Wow. Thought was not from behind from Johnson. The Fisher saw it differently. It would be Panther basketball. Absolutely. A lot of contact right here, right in front of us. I thought that we should have been able to get a foul right there. Johnson does a really good job holding his composure versus his, the pressure. Inbounds pass to Mack. Now to Roberts. Quick ball movement on the right wing for Cox. Trying to get inside. They do so to Daniels at the free throw line. Spin move against Lynn. Pass deflected out of bounds. No, they say it's thrown away. Go to line basketball. Still looking for our first points of the night. As Gambrell returns for the Golden Lion, for the Panthers, I should say, replacing Daniels. 10-0 UAPB trailing. Inbounds pass to Morris, pass deflected, knocked away into the hands of Doss. Over to Johnson, who will slow it down, gets into the front court, being hounded by Gambrell. Now Banyard trapped in the corner. Foul called against Prairie View. It appears it was away from the ball, I believe. And Briscoe called for the foul, his first and the fourth Panther team foul. So Dawson trigger, top of the key to Banyard. Dawson on the curl, ball knocked away, loose on the floor. Morris battling for it. But Briscoe comes out with it for Prairie View AM. Yeah, you got to definitely get on the floor and get those 50 50 balls. Give us a second chance to get another shot off. Mack will slow it down for the Panthers, working against Johnson on the left wing. Brings it left, dribble handoff to Cox now around the horn to Gambrell. Quick reversal under 10 to shoot for the Panthers. Gambrell feeds Roberts. Tough shot, good defense by Lynn, but a better effort. And somehow he got to go 12 nothing. Prairie View in front. I thought that looked like a lucky shot to me, Dwayne. I thought that looked lucky to me. Oh, no doubt about it. Defense <laughs> was there. He threw it up, got the fortuitous bounce, and knocked it down. Right. Johnson trying to drive right. Gets inside, hop step, tough shot. Draws the foul. Johnson won. Johnson will shoot two. Foul against Briscoe. His second. And you mentioned the calm of Josh Juan Johnson. You have to get all the way up on him. He's very, very soft-spoken, but lies the tenaciousness in which he plays with on the floor. I mean, I'm going to have to call him Johnson and Johnson. He's just like always <laughs> there. He's always there. You know, he does a really good job of, of being a true point guard and a lead on the floor, composed at all times. I, I'm really impressed with his game. First point of the night for the Golden Lions. As Johnson knocks down the first free throw, Trevante Doolittle checks in for the first time for the Golden Lions, as does Kayshawn Stokes. 
The first points from the free throw line, 12-2 we trail, 13-25 and counting in the first half. All you have to do is see one go in, Dwayne, and then, you know, we'll, we'll be able to have some more to follow. Matt taking it right against the Golden Lions zone. Gets return pass, quick moving inside to Roberts. Pulls up in the lane over Doolittle, no good. Trevante to the rebound for the Golden Lions. Into Johnson, now back to Doolittle. Cut off in front of our bench, gets to the head to Johnson in the front court. He attacks and folder up off the mark. Banyard battling for the board, lost it, taken away by Mack for Prairie View. Stokes takes it back to the Golden Lions. And now Johnson will reset inside to Banyard in the left block. Fakes up and under, counted, and a chance for the three-point play. Absolutely. That was a big play for us. We ne definitely needed that. Good patience by Banyard. Foul trouble the last couple of games on the road. We definitely need his presence on the floor, not only from an offensive standpoint, but certainly his size from a defensive perspective, as you mentioned earlier, Coach, against a smaller Prairie View team compared to what we saw Saturday against Texas Southern. Banyard definitely, he has the makeup, uh, a, a very nice type physique, and I think that, you know, with his athleticism, he definitely kind of get us going. Free throw by the senior from Milwaukee is good. Five straight points now for the Golden Lions. 12-5 we trail, 12-35 and counting in the first half. Matt. At the top, gets it over to Cox. And now Gambrell, inside pass, quick reversal by Prairie View. Done a good job of that so far. Now Henry in the left baseline gets it to Matt. Left side three, too strong. Stokes the rebound. Up ahead to Johnson. One on two. Knocked away, gets it back, throws it up. No good. Knocked away, saved by Doolittle in the far corner. Cross court pass to Lynn. Now right corner Stokes. Drives, gets it back to Lynn. Sets his feet. He'll drive inside. Around Henry, off the glass, up and in. Great patience and, and got ball movement. They didn't settle for the three, work to get it in, get a better shot at the layup. 7-0 run by the Golden Lions. We trail by five, 12-7. 11 and counting in the first half. Cox, back to Mack, working against Lynn. Out to Gambrell for three, and it's good. Third three of the night for the Panthers. 15-7, their lead back to 8, 11-30 and counting in the first half. You know, one thing about playing zone defense, you know, you definitely don't want to start a team to, to getting three balls off, especially if they're falling. So just got to close out and be there on the catch a little bit earlier. Johnson working against Cox, feeds Lynn inside the band yard. In trouble, gets it out to Johnson. Face the three, gets it to Stokes. Right corner three, off the mark, too strong. Rebound, Prairie View, Mack on the push for the Panthers. He will slow it down now under 11 to play in the first half. Cox back to Mack. Now over to Gambrell. Long three right side is good. He was definitely deep on that one. So, so being there, we got to make sure we have a hand in his face. Timeout called by George Ivor. This will be the under 12 media timeout. Go to the Lions Trail 18-7 on the UAPB Sports Network. The ideal cut round diamond was developed by a mathematician in 1919. The method was used to release the maximum amount of brilliance inside a diamond. That was a hundred years ago. The future is fire polish and you have to see it to believe it. Nanotechnology creates an explosion of fire that's over 300 times more brilliant. Come see the brilliant future of diamonds for yourself at Sissy's Log Cabin. Sissy's Log Cabin because life's too short for ordinary jewelry. Hi, I'm Ford Trotter for Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff. We believe in being tried and true. And that means earning your repeat business by giving you our best customer service and best deals every single time. Like up to $14,000 off MSRP on the 2019 F-150 Crew Cab. That's right, $14,000 off MSRP. So come see for yourself. Shop Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff and TrotterFord.com today. Tried, true, tried. The 410 Lounge is open for lunch Wednesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And for happy hour Wednesday through Sunday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. The 410 Lounge, located at 303 West 31st Avenue, also features Wing Wednesday, Taco Thursday, R&B Fridays, Grown and Sexy Saturdays, and Game Night on Sunday. The 410 Lounge. Proud supporters of your Golden Lions. 
Dear Adidas, we believe that through sport, we have the power to change lives. A female, coaching me. Is anybody watching female sports? Pull up the kiss down. But female athletes are being left behind. We have the power to make a new world for female athletes. So come together, fight for equality, and level the field. To ensure that no matter the challenge ahead, she breaks barriers. This is the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff Sports Network. 10.50 to play in the first half. Those Lions trailing Prairie View by the score of 18-7. to seven. Panthers won the three unbeaten teams in men's play, along with 2-0 Alabama AM and m and 2-0 Jackson. We'll be in the capital city of Mississippi a week from tonight, 5.30 p.m. doubleheader with women's game, with pregame beginning at 5.15, part of a trip that begins Saturday at Grambling. 3 p.m. tip will be on the air with you at 2.45 p.m. right here on 99.3 F in the beat. Following the under-12 media timeout. Johnson on the right wing, trying to get past the PB defense. Lynn pulls up for three, short. Stokes battling for the rebound, ball on the floor. Jump ball, and it will be Prairie View possession on the alternating arrow. As... Sean Doss Jr. returns, replacing Joshua Johnson. Eighteen seven, Golden Lions trailing by eleven. Ten fifteen and counting in the first half. Daniels pulls up and knocks down the right side jumper for the Panthers. 20 to 7. Our deficit is 13, our largest at the midway mark of the first half. Stokes feeds Dawson side, double pump shot. No good. Banyard the offensive rebound, blocked from behind. Late whistle will take it. Foul called against Daniels. Absolutely. An offensive rebound and the putback to draw a foul is a great way to kind of get us going right now. And Banyard already three rebounds, and that's the size his impact is having already at the line, shooting two. Scored early on the three-point play. Chance here to get two to bring his two within. 11 first free throw is good. Yet again, his presence, though, it, it, gives, us, it gives us a chance to be able to, to draw some defenders inside to him. But, you know, they're going to have to get up to try to contest the shot because he is so athletic and strong. Second free throw for Banyard. Off the mark. Rebound Daniels. 20 to 8. Golden Lions trailing by 12, 9.45 and counting in the first half. Baseline jumper by Daniels, too strong, offers a rebound, and the putback by Henry for Prairie View A&M. Deficit now 14 at 22 to 8. 9.30 and counting in the first half. Half court trapped by the Panthers. And timeout called by Kayshawn Stokes. And the challenge now, if I'm not mistaken, that's the third timeout we've called. Only one timeout remaining for the entire game for head coach George Ivory and the Golden Lions. Well, you know, one thing about it, the, the, game, the men's game is so fast. They play so up-tempo. Um, and, and so definitely with our depth that we have, we'll be able to get, we'll be able to get still in the flow of things. Every four minutes, as many of you know, at the first dead ball under 16, 12, and 8 and 4 in the game clock, we have an automatic media timeout. So we're not without stoppages in play, but certainly have to be mindful going forward. For the final almost 30 minutes of this contest. Having two point guards, you got you see up Johnson, um, that that's going to be able to come in and help you with that press too. So I, I feel we'll be fine. Inbounds pass to Lynn. He'll bring it back into the front court for the Golden Lions. Just two of thirteen shooting so far. Do little trapped on the wing, knocked away, gets it back. It was knocked out of bounds on the sideline. Will remain Golden Line basketball with six on the shot clock.
Doss will throw it in out to Stokes. Driving right against Daniels. Gets to the paint. Tough shot. Pass partially blocked. Rebound Daniels for the Panthers. I thought he had a good look at the rim. Um, you know, I think a Prairie View Mayor got a tempo on it. Daniels inside to Henry. Gets inside. Now back in the left corner. Three-pointer off the mark by Gambrell. Banyard the board for the Golden Lions. Knocked away from behind. Saved by Lynn. They'll say it was out of bounds on the sideline. Prairie View basketball. Way to get on the floor, though. I, you know, getting those 50-50 balls, letting you know that you're going to have to work for it if you want it. Um, that def definitely shows the tenacity that, that UAP men's basketball has. As Morris returns for the Golden Lions. It's been a Texas two-step, not only for basketball, but UAPB volleyball opened this season with a win in four sets over Texas Southern yesterday. Lost in three today to Prairie View. We'll be back in action in conference play Sunday at Grambling. 22-8, Golden Lions men's basketball trailing here, 840 and counting in the first half. Mack left open, left wing three off the mark. Rebound fought for, Banyard comes out with it for the Golden Lions. Johnson in the front court trying to work against the Panther defense, gets it to Doss, right corner three, too strong, rebound Prairie View. Panthers want to push with Roberts, who checked in. Cross-court pass, knocked out of bounds. They'll say off a of prayer view, and it will be Golden Line basketball. Good anticipation by Doss. Yeah, and we have Johnson back in the game also, too. So, you know, you have two players that can handle the point, run the point, so we should be able to thread the needles on. Slow shooting start right now, just 2 of 15, including 0 for 6 from three-point range. Next, we need to score and a couple of stops here to slow down this Panther team. Johnson, tough shot, could not get the home gym bounce. Ball loose on the floor. Prairie View has it. Henry with the board. Under eight to play now in the first half. Mack at the top, guarded by Johnson. Trying to get the screen, gives way to Gambrell. Takes it back right over the Panther double screen. Now Roberts out top to Indigo. Inside pass. Shot clock at one. They do not get it off. Shot clock violation. There's a stop we needed. Golden Lions basketball. When we come back with seven, 26 to play in the first half. Golden Lions trailing 22 to eight on the UAPB Sports Network. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the pride. Hi, I'm Ford Trotter for Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff. We believe in being tried and true. And that means earning your repeat business by giving you our best customer service and best deals every single time. Like up to $14,000 off MSRP on the 2019 F-150 Crew Cab. That's right, $14,000 off MSRP. So come see for yourself. Shop Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff and TrotterFord.com today. Tried, true, tried. We salute our UAPB student-athletes who again performed exceptionally in the classroom. During the fall semester, more than 160 student-athletes earned at least a 3.0 GPA, with nearly 90 attaining at least a 3.5 GPA and 10 earning a perfect 4.0. Additionally, nearly 20 student-athletes and student-athletic staff graduated in December 2020. Congratulations to our student-athletes on a job well done. Seven twenty-six to play in the first half. 
Men's basketball trailing 22 to 8. Got to find a way to knock down some shots. Just 2 of 16 from the field, 0 of 6 from three point range. You are 4 of 5 at the free throw line. Minus 5 right now in the free throws and the rebounds, I should say, at 15 to 10. Panther basketball now following the under 8 media timeout with Morris in the front court on the floor with Johnson, Doss, Banyard, and Lynn. I think we've been doing a really good job as far as executing, uh, getting the shots. They just got to fall. Lynn on the right wing, cross court to Johnson. Now 10 on the shot clock. Banyard, double teamed on the block, out to Johnson. Gets it back to Banyard, fakes the three, drives the baseline, is cut off, out top to Lynn. Top of the key, three, off the mark. Morris tipped up, no good. Doss could not get it out of bounds. Prairie View basketball. I think those are the rebounds that Banyard is going to have to get his hands in so we can get some rebound putbacks. That's what the team needs right now. They're going to have to depend on him down in the paint. And just as you said, we're getting looks. Even though at the end of the shot clock, good patience by Banyard getting it back out top of the lane. Right now it's just not going. Got to get maybe some of those second, third chance opportunities to score off the glass. Absolutely. Drawing the foul is going to be key for us also. Prairie View is doing a good job as far as walling up with their hands up. But, you know, that gives you a better opportunity to lean into them and draw the contact and get to the free throw line. Alvin Shreddy Jr. checks in for the first time for the Golden Lions, replacing Johnson. So go with Lynn and Morris in the backcourt along with Doss, Stredick, and Banyard. Good pressure by Morris. Gambrell out top. 15 to shoot for Prairie View. Panthers lead 22-8. Gambrell, left baseline jumper is good. good 24-8. Our deficit now is 16. 620 and counting. In the first half, Lynn shakes free from Mack. Top of the key, Morris. still will drive inside, float her up off the glass, count it, and a chance for a three-point play. Thought he was going to going to let it fly as a floater. He floated to the basket, drew the foul, had the chance for a three-point play. Yeah, with, with, with Prairie View being so overly active, that's the, that's exactly what we're going to have to do, get him in foul trouble, kind of relax him a little bit, and then be able to cash out at the free throw line. Morris, is, Morris misses the free throw. Rebound Panthers, 24-10. First points for Morris. Game clock now under six to play in the first half. Three-pointer left side off the mark by Gambrell. Lynn the board up ahead to Banyard, who throws it down. Has a contest on the three and dunks on the run out. 24-12. Deficit cut to 12. 5.45 and counting in the first half. Quick ball movement, Henry. Gets the bounce and the basket inside for the Panthers. 26-12. Seems like every time we score, they answer. Five and a half to play in the first half. Shots falling for Prairie View. Uh, we just have to do a better job as far as attacking the basket. Definitely being able to get, to get in the paint and get in those chippies. As Doss knocks down the jumper, his first points of the night. Good sign there, 24-16. 5-15 and counting in the first half. And definitely number 21 to get it going for the Golden Lions. Whistle and the foul called against the Golden Lions. Foul called against Doss. His first, only the, the second team foul against the Golden Lions. So Prairie View will throw it in, 5.06 to play until halftime. Henry in trouble, gives way to Gambrell. Good pressure by Streddick. Got the trap we want. Foul called. Wow. That's tough a tough there. one. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Coach Ivory pleading this case to KB Burdett Jr., who has a smile on his face. And that's the pressure you want. You, we got him in the spot we want with that sideline as the third defender, active hands. KB thought a little too active. Whistle against the Golden Lions. Following Stredick, his first, just the third now, against UAPB in the first half. Out top to Matt. Drives left. Tries to put the double team. Ball loose on the floor. Gets it back. Ball still loose. I believe it is Dawson on the bottom of the pile for the Golden Lions. Jump ball. We have the arrow.
So to say it's actually PB with possession. Shot clock at six. Long three, top of the key off the mark by Gambrell. Rebound Bell for the Golden Lions. That was a great rebound for, for um, Bell, limiting them to one shot. Uh, being able to just come down and right now execute so we can get a bucket. And I believe what the call was, I believe Doss was out of bounds on that far side going for that loose ball. Pass behind Morris that time. He was going in. Lynn left it out. Turnover back to the Panthers. <laughs> As Daniels returns for the Panthers, 26-14. That the eighth turnover, I believe, by the Golden Lions. They led just four Panther points to this point. On the baseline, Daniels, cross-court pass, long cross-court pass. And Bell with the foul you don't want. Following a jump shooter, Roberts will shoot three. When we come back... With exactly four to play in the first half. Golden Lions trailing 26-14 on the UAPB Sports Network. We are the SWAC. Our heritage lifts us to great heights. Because my history is forged by trailblazers. That motivates me today to focus on my future. We are the SWAC. We are the new trailblazers. And this is my heritage. Dear Adidas, we believe that through sport, we have the power to change lives. A female coaching me. Anybody watching female sports? Who wants to kiss down? But female athletes are being left behind. We have the power to make a new world for female athletes. So come together, fight for equality, and level the field ensure that no matter the challenge ahead, she breaks barriers. Simmons Bank has a lot of pride in Pine Bluff. It's been our home since 1903, but our goal has always remained the same, to help make our customers' dreams come true. From our headquarters downtown to more than 200 locations across eight states. That's a lot of dreams coming true. And they all started right here in Pine Bluff. Simmons Bank, Pine Bluff proud. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. <sighs> Four minutes to play in the first half. With UAPB women's coach Dawn Brown and Eddie Fletcher holding things down back at Delta Flex Radio. I'm Dwayne Lewis. Men's basketball trailing 26 to 14. Starting to find the offensive rhythm just a little bit. Down 12, starting to make some shots. Now need some stops over this final four-minute stretch. Get this deficit to 10 or less by the halftime break. Roberts at the line, shooting two for the Panthers, and he knocks down the first. I know in practice what we talk about a lot, Dwayne, is, is ODO, offense, defense, and offense. So we're able to score a bucket, get one stop, and come back down and score. That's the momentum that we need. Bell fouled Roberts on the three-point attempt, so he's knocked down the first two. One free throw remaining in a light schedule and swag play southern women playing at, at alabama a and m earlier today all corn men at alabama a and m was postponed one other men's game later tonight southern at alabama state so roberts converts all three free throws top of the key three by lynn off the mark Rebound loose. Doss comes out with it for the Golden Lions. 29-14 we trail. 340 and counting until halftime. Banyard to Doss. Free throw line jumper good. 
We'll need more of that as this game moves forward. 29-16, Doss now with four. 320 and counting until halftime. Mack on the left wing. Now top to Roberts. Cox on the right wing for the Panthers. Back to Mack. They've done a good job moving the ball around the perimeter and slip one inside, as they do here now, to Daniels. Bodies flying, offensive foul, as Lynn does dirty work for the Golden Lions. That's the stop that we need. We just have to come back down right now to convert that to an offensive bucket. Johnson returns, replacing Morris for the Golden Lions. Foul on Daniels, his third. And the ninth against Prairie View here in the first half. Lynn lost it in the backcourt. Actually, won the women's game in action. Southern leading at Alabama State, 43-38. That game in the third quarter. Whistle and a foul against the Panthers. Foul on Henry is his third. So three fouls against Daniels, three fouls against Henry. That's tough, I know, for any coach for you to have, you know, a player that's playing a lot of minutes to pick up the third foul in the first, in the first half of the game. That's not what you want. Um, but, you know, that's what we want. We want those Absolutely. opportunities to, to, to convert at the free throw line, and that's what we're doing. As Dawes shooting two, Golden Lions in the double bonus. Morris returns, replacing Lynn. And Gambrell returns for Prairie View a &M, replacing Briscoe. Talked about that earlier in the quarter, though, also. You know, I think that them picking up these fouls, um, you know, having to make those substitutions, not really having a lot of depth on the bench, that should work in our favor for sure. One of two for Dolphs, 29-17. Our deficit is 12, 245 and counting in the first half. Gambrell being shaded by Dolphs, now top of the key to Cox. Slipped inside to Roberts, tough shot, and gets the bounce. <laughs> Seven now for Roberts. 31-17. Golden line deficit back to 14. 225 and counting in the first half. Morris in the right wing finds a cutting Doss. Triple teams on the right side. Cross court pass Johnson. Pulls up for three off the mark. Offensive rebound Streddick out to Doss. He pulls up for three. Top of the backboard out of bounds. Panther basketball. Had to look, just would not go down. And we have not made the three so far tonight. You know, the only way for you to start hitting them is to keep shooting them. Definitely. So we definitely got to keep getting a, getting a good look at the basket. Under two to play in the first half. Gambrell on the right wing, shaded by Doss. Now up top to Mack. Quick ball movement. Gambrell driving right, cut off by Doss. Quick baseline pass, backdoor cut in the basket for Cox. 33-17. Our deficit back to 16. Final 90 seconds of the first half. Doss, pass deflected out of bounds. Will remain UAPB basketball with 16 to shoot. Stay with us for the Reliance Bank halftime report. Desiree McKenzie will have your go-to line sports report. We'll have scores and stats from around the swag. Johnson feeds Stredick. Good, strong move inside. Scores off the glass and a chance for a three-point play. You know, yet again, every time that we're able to get the ball on the block, uh, we're drawing those type of defenders over to us. So we got it. we're doing a great job as far as capitalizing on that. Prairie View, I think, a little frustrated behind it also. So um, that should give us more, more opportunities right there in, in the paint. See if we can make this late run to end the half with Two stars on the bench for the Panthers using our size inside with Stredick, who converts the three-point play. 33-20. Final 115 of the first half. Matt 
On the left wing. Near side, long three. Gambrell knocks it down. Every time we get a little bit of a run, they've had an answer. Deficit back to 16. Final 50 seconds of the first half. Banyard out top to Johnson. Trying to work against Gambrell. Feeds Banyard backing down. Double team. Knocked away into the hands of Morris. Knocked away into the hands of Mack. Two on one for the Panthers. Gambrell running the floor off the glass. Up and in. One thing about it, you know, you're definitely going to have to double team Banyard if you want to try to slow him down because once he posts up and seals, he's going to score that bucket. Active hands for the Panthers. About a two-second difference between game and shot clock. 12 to play in the first half. Johnson on the right wing, trying to go left over the stretching screen. Knocked away, stolen by Prairie View. Lead pass up ahead to Roberts, who throws it down. <laughs> And we have a warning. It's no tech, but a warning. Coach George Ivory looking for a foul. Two seconds to play in the first half. Estreddick gets it in to Johnson. And just beyond half court, rims out would have been good if it went. But we'll head to the halftime locker room down by the score of 40 to 20. This is your Reliance Bank halftime report. Golden Lions did not lead in the first half as Prairie View. Every time we made a mini run, the Panthers had an answer and now have taken this largest lead of the night at 20 by the score of 40 to 20. Stay with us. For the Lions Bank Halftime Report, Desiree McKenzie will have your Golden Lions Sports Report. And I'll be back with stats and scores from around the conference. That's next on the UAPB Sports Network. This is your UAPB Golden Lions Sports Report. Get the latest news on our official website at UAPBLionsWorld.com. Get mobile with your Golden Lions. Download our free mobile app for Droid and iPhone and follow Athletics on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Both Golden Lion basketball teams return to the road this week to begin a four-game swag doubleheader road trip. This Saturday, UAPB will play at Gramlet in a 3 p.m. doubleheader. Next Monday, February 1st, UAPB will play at Jackson State in a 5.30 p.m. doubleheader. Both Golden Lion teams will then travel to face Alabama State on Saturday, February 6th, and Alabama A&M on Monday, February 8th. Listen to all the action on 99.3 FM The Beat, online at UAPBLionsWorld.com forward slash live, and on the free UAPB Athletics app. The UAPB women's and men's indoor track and field teams will return to action Sunday in the KMS Open in Birmingham, Alabama. Also on Sunday, UAPB Volleyball will play at Gramlin in a SWAC match at 6 p.m. The super spring season of UAPB athletics is underway. In February, the UAPB golf, softball, baseball, soccer, and football teams all begin their season. Follow all the action at UAPBLionsRoar.com. We congratulate and salute UAPB football NFL Golden Lions, Jamie Gillen of the Cleveland Browns, and Teron Armstead of the New Orleans Saints on outstanding 2020 season. Gillen completed his second NFL season with the Browns, while Armstead was named to his third straight Pro Bowl. This has been your UAPB Sports Report. For the latest news in Golden Lion Athletics, visit UAPBLionsRoar.com. The 410 Lounge is open for lunch Wednesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And for happy hour Wednesday through Sunday from 5 p.m. to 
to 8 p.m. The Fort Ten Lounge, located at 303 West 31st Avenue, also features Wing Wednesday, Taco Thursday, R&B Fridays, Grown and Sexy Saturdays, and Game Night on Sundays. The Four Ten Lounge, proud supporters of your Golden Lions. We salute our UAPB student athletes who again performed exceptionally in the classroom. During the fall semester, more than 160 student athletes earned at least a 3.0 GPA, with nearly 90 attaining at least a 3.5 GPA and 10 earning a perfect 4.0. Additionally, nearly 20 student athletes and student athletic staff graduated in December 2020. Congratulations to our student athletes on a job well done. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas to form a sturdy, spirited association. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. From the southeastern region of the United States in Alabama to the second largest state in the country in Texas, the parishes of Louisiana through the Mississippi River and the natural state of Arkansas, Students from all over the world demonstrate the ability to perform, achieve, and excel in scholastic activities. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship. Create your world of contacts and friendships that last a lifetime. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We will always carry a spirit of respect and competition. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. The ideal cut round diamond was developed by a mathematician in 1919. The method was used to release the maximum amount of brilliance inside a diamond. That was 100 years ago. The future is fire polished, and you have to see it to believe it. Nanotechnology creates an explosion of fire that's over 300 times more brilliant. Come see the brilliant future of diamonds for yourself at Sissy's Log Cabin. Sissy's Log Cabin, because life's too short for ordinary jewelry. Dear Adidas, we believe that through sport, we have the power to change lives. A female coaching me. Anybody watching female sports? Who wants a kiss down? But female athletes are being left behind. We have the power to make a new world for female athletes. So come together, fight for equality, and level the field ensure that no matter the challenge ahead, she breaks barriers. Back with more of your Reliance Bank Halftime Report. Golden Lion men's basketball did not lead in the first half, trailing Prairie View at the half by the score of 40 to 20. Just 7 of 27 shooting by the Golden Lions, 26%. We are 0 for 11 front three-point range, and right now we're getting six points, four rebounds inside from Terrence Banyard, has some points inside also from Alvin Strickley Jr., Dawson with five. We've got to find a way to make some shots. We are bigger than Prairie View, and having some presence inside, the points in the paint, not really a factor as they were on Saturday. Right now, just minus four in that category, 18 to 14, but we have to find a way to make some shots from the outside. 11 first-half turnovers for the Golden Lions, leading to 11 Prairie View and in points. Jeremiah Gambrell leading the way for the Panthers with 19 points on 7 of 10 shooting. He's made all five three-pointers for the Panthers as a team. They shot 56% from the field, just 36% from three-point range. But again, Gambrell 5 of 8 from distance and the Panthers 5 of 5 at the free throw line. Out rebounding the Golden Lions 19 to 16. Eight first half steals for the Panthers contributing to their 20-point lead at 40 to 20. We mentioned a limited schedule in the SWAC tonight. Men's game between Alcorn at Alabama A&M. That game was postponed earlier today. One women's game, that game in Montgomery. Southern leading Alabama State by the score of 51 to 43. One of the men's games tonight will be matched up those same two teams in Montgomery Southern and Alabama State. That game will tip at around 8 p.m. A busy week ahead in SWAC basketball as Grambling, who had his opening game at Alabama State postponed, they will play in Montgomery Wednesday before UAPB makes his way to Grambling on Saturday for a 3 p.m. doubleheader. We'll have the game for you right here starting at 2.45 p.m. with the hope to have a doubleheader. 2.45 pregame right here on 
99.3 from the beat prior to the men's game at 5.30 p.m. We mentioned UAPB women not in action this weekend. TSU had contact trace within this program. Prairie View women, a positive test. Important games ahead is right now as we speak. Grambling 3-1 prior to the Wednesday game in Montgomery. Jackson State defending regular season champs. They are 5-1 and one in league play. And then following that, we'll play at Alabama State. So the leaders are ahead for women's basketball. A chance for us to make some hay, get back into the race. Important games ahead as we move forward. Obviously, COVID permitting. For men's basketball, trying to bounce back here. 20-point deficit at the half before going on the road to take on a Grambling team. Right now, 3-3 three and three in league play. Jackson State, 2-0 and before we head to Alabama. Bulldogs right now just 2-0. and They've been hampered by COVID challenges in their program as well as among their opponents. So it will be a big February ahead, as we've talked about earlier, trying to make up as many games as possible, trying to make the 13-game mandate that is needed to be eligible for a SWAC tournament and hopeful NCAA play. Here, men's basketball, trailing Prairie View by the score of 40-20. to Second half action is next right here on the UAPB Sports Network. Hi, I'm Ford Trotter for Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff. We believe in being tried and true. And that means earning your repeat business by giving you our best customer service and best deals every single time. Like up to $14,000 off MSRP on the 2019 F-150 Crew Cab. That's right, $14,000 off MSRP. So come see for yourself. Shop Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff and TrotterFord.com today. Tried, true, Trotter. Dear Adidas, we believe that through sport, we have the power to change lives. A female coaching me. Is anybody watching female sports? But female athletes are being left behind. We have the power to make a new world for female athletes. So come together, fight for equality, and level the field to ensure that no matter the challenge ahead, she breaks barriers. I am attorney Ephraim Neely of the Neely Law Firm, where I provide excellent legal service at an affordable rate. I practice criminal, domestic relations, and personal injury work. My office is located at 1514 South Poplar Street, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. The telephone number is 870-536-9336. That's 870-536-9336. As a graduate of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, I support the Golden Lion and Lead Department in all its endeavors. Who are you rooting for? You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. This is your UAPB Golden Lions Sports Report. Get the latest news on our official website at UAPBLionsWorld.com. Get mobile with your Golden Lions. Download our free mobile app for Droid and iPhone and follow Athletics on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Both Golden Lion basketball teams return to the road this week to begin a four-game swag doubleheader road trip. This Saturday, UAPB will play at Gramlin in a 3 p.m. doubleheader. Next Monday, February 1st, UAPB will play at Jackson State in a 5.30 p.m. doubleheader. Both Golden Lion teams will then travel to face Alabama State on Saturday, February 6th, and Alabama A&M on Monday, February 8th. Listen to all the action on 99.3 FM The Beat, online at UAPBLionsWorld.com forward slash live, and on the free UAPB Athletics app. 
The UAPB Women's and Men's Indoor Track and Field Teams will return to action Sunday in the KMS Open in Birmingham, Alabama. Also on Sunday, UAPB Volleyball will play at Grambling in a SWAC match at 6 p.m. The super spring season of UAPB athletics is underway. In February, the UAPB golf, softball, baseball, soccer, and football teams all begin their season. Follow all the action at UAPBLionsRoar.com. We congratulate and salute UAPB football NFL Golden Lions, Jamie Gillen of the Cleveland Browns, and Teron Armstead of the New Orleans Saints on outstanding 2020 season. Gillen completed his second NFL season with the Browns, while Armstead was named to his third straight Pro Bowl. This has been your UAPB Sports Report. For the latest news in Golden Lion Athletics, visit UAPBLionsRoar.com. Started my Camry, went to the auction, won a storage locker. The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. Set to begin second half action from the H.O. Clemens Arena, men's basketball. As we almost did on Saturday, we tried to erase a 20-point deficit, trailing Prairie View at the half, 40 to 20. It'll be Golden Lion basketball with the chairman of the board, Eddie Fletcher, and UAPB women's basketball coach, Dawn Brown. I'm Dwayne Lewis. Johnson, Doss, Banyard, Bell, and Lynn in the front court for the Golden Lions. Johnson driving right, cut off on the baseline. Out top to Lynn. 10 to shoot for UAPB. Inside the Banyard. Fakes up and under, could not convert. Rebound Prairie View. And again, a point blank miss for the Golden Lions. I thought Banyard had a good look at the basket. I think he was just kind of a little bit off balance. Um, but that's his shot, and he'll knock those down. Mack over to Gambrell. Back over to Mack. Opening possession of the half for the Panthers. Daniels, quick ball movement. Left wing three good once again by Gambrell. His sixth three of the night. 43-20. Panthers lead. 22 now for Jeremiah Gambrell. Johnson. Beast Bell on the left baseline. Picked up. Top of the key three by Johnson. Off the mark. Rebound Daniels. Go to the line looking for our first made three of the night. Gambrell over to Mack. Panthers two-time defending regular season champs. Three-second violation turned over to the Golden Lions. See if we can put together a couple of possessions with some made shots. Certainly with a comeback, you need some stops. We also need some made shots. Opening two minutes of this second half. I thought we did a really good job our first quarter, uh, first half, attacking the basket, uh, being able to to get those easy baskets right here at the, at the, at, in the paint. As so. Bell feeds Dawson to the basket, we saw Bell cut down the lane. Good things happen when you cut to the basket. This is how he found Dawson for the jam. Especially with them, with them double teaming inside on the post, so you got to look to get the ball to the open person where the double team is coming from. Seven now for Dawson, 43-22. 
See if we can chip away one possession, one by the elephant at a time. Spin move, tough shot in the paint, up and in. Basket for Ingadal, 45 22. He now has five for the Panthers. We got to do a, a, a good job, too, as far as getting an inside-out game for a three. Hopefully it'll, it'll be one that we'll get the fall, but a second-chance opportunity is something that, that I know that can help us get going also. Bell got the offensive board. We're working inside-out that time. Three-pointer would not go by Lynn. Rather down, popped out. Bell the board. Foul against Engeldahl, his second. Doss will throw it in. Out top to Banyard. Gives way to Bell on the left wing. Now Johnson going left over the Bell screen. Josh one gets inside, tough shot, fouled, and Josh will shoot two. You know, I had a chance to talk to Coach Ivory a little bit um, in the way that they're practicing shooting the three ball. So I know that they actually get the reps. You know, just kind of focusing and getting that shot to fall is, is, is a minor adjustment that we'll just have to make. Johnson, two of two at the line, has not made a shot from the field, misses the first free throw. Go to the lines now, six of ten at the free throw line. And it appears that they're good shots within the flow of the offense, not four shots or rush shots right now, just not going. Yeah, you know, you're getting the ball to the right people, and, and they're taking those shots, uh, getting those attempts up. It, it, it's going to fall. One is going to fall, Dwayne. 45-23, one of two for Johnson, under 17 to play. Still a lot of time in this contest. Got to work away, getting one possession at a time. Three-pointer left side, and now Daniels knocks down his first three for the Panthers. Prairie View's doing a good job as far as knocking down that shot. We got to get a hand out, continue to defend, and sit down and, and, and focus on, on slowing that three, three ball down. 48-23, 16 and a half remaining. Johnson feeds a cutting bell, but the pass out of bounds turned over to the Panthers. Like you said earlier, you just got to keep chipping, staying positive, um, and taking one possession at a time. Panthers 7 of 16 from three-point range. Three-point and miss, offensive rebound by Henry. Feeds Cox for the basket. He's fouled in a chance for a three-point play. Bell called for the foul, his second and the first against UAPB here in the second half. You know, Prairie View has um, zero on the floor with three fouls, and, and then you also have 22 with three fouls. So you got to look to attack the basket some offensively. You know, if the three ball isn't falling, um, being able to draw them, because one thing you know about, you know they're not going to try to pick up their fourth foul uh, this early in, in the second half. As Briscoe returns, replacing Daniels, and now leaves the floor with those three fouls. Three-point play made by Cox, 51-23, under 16 minutes to play. Banyard on the right wing. Ball knocked away, stolen by the Panthers. Cox gets it off the glass, up and in. And things continue to go the Panthers' way. Our deficit now is 30 at 53-23, 15-40 remaining. Banyard gets inside, feeds Stredick. Left baseline jumper. Three, four bounce on the rim, would not go. Foul against Banyard, battling for the board. Panthers basketball when we come back with 15, 32 remaining. Goes Lions trail 53-23 on the UAPB Sports Network. Simmons Bank has a lot of pride in Pine Bluff. It's been our home since 1903, but our goal has always remained the same, to help make our customers' dreams come true. From our headquarters downtown to more than 200 locations across eight states. That's a lot of dreams coming true. And they all started right here in Pine Bluff. Simmons Bank, Pine Bluff proud. What's with Mountain Dew? Mountain Dew is like a zipline of incredible flavor directly into your brain. 
Mountain Dew is like getting punched in the mouth with pure neon refreshment that creates a neural explosion sending flavor shards of electric brain pulses into your very core of being. Okay, maybe that's a little over the top, but you get the idea. The fact is, the mind-bending challenge of describing the taste of Mountain Dew is way harder than just experiencing it. That, of course, is easy. Just grab a nice cold dew, crack it open, and toss them back. Mountain Dew. Do the dew. Hi, I'm Ford Trotter for Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff. We believe in being tried and true. And that means earning your repeat business by giving you our best customer service and best deals every single time. Like up to $14,000 off MSRP on the 2019 F-150 Crew Cab. That's right, $14,000 off MSRP. So come see for yourself. Shop Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff and TrotterFord.com today. Try True Trotter. Dear Adidas, we believe that through sport, we have the power to change lives. A female coaching me. Is anybody watching female sports? Hold us a kiss down. But female athletes are being left behind. We have the power to make a new world for female athletes. So come together, fight for equality, and level the field to ensure that no matter the challenge ahead, she breaks barriers. Fifteen thirty-one remaining. Golden Lions trailing Prairie View 53-23. Mack at the top for the Panthers. Gets inside, shot up, no good, but fouled by Streddick. And two free throws ahead for the Panthers. You know, one thing that I definitely have to give Coach Ivory credit for, uh, they do a really good job as far as communicating on defense. They're talking, they're active, um, you know, uh, and, and we're getting those shots. Fairview's just hitting a few more threes than we are right now, and that's really and truly the difference of the ball game. No doubt they are plus 21 in scoring from the three-point line. They've made seven. We've not made one. We're down 30, mm-hmm. and that's a big contributor to that as Daniels makes the first free throw. Prairie View two-time defending regular season champ, the Kansas City Chiefs will try to make it two in a row in the Super Bowl 13 days from now as they take on Tom Brady in his 10th career Super Bowl. Break down the matchup for us. Dwayne, I don't watch anything. You waiting on me to say something about the NFL. <laughs> That's not my area. <laughs> Should be a great matchup. Of course, one of our graduate assistants, Desiree McKenzie, from Kansas City, as one of our new student assistants, Kalan Hooks, excited about the Chiefs going back, trying to make it two in a row as Lynn scores inside and a chance for a three-point play for the Golden Lions. That's exactly what we're going to have to continue to do, um, de- defending and, and coming back down and attacking the basket and getting to the free throw line. We've been doing a really good job of that tonight. Lynn now with four, first free throw attempt. Tonight for the junior from Collierville, Tennessee. Free throw, rims out. Rebound, Henry. 55-25 under 15 minutes to play. And certainly while a lot's been made about Brady as Henry scores inside, the consistency is what any coach would love to have. You have a player that's played 21 years He's in, he's in the championship game half of his career, played in his 14th championship game yesterday after my the consistency of that. As Johnson on the left wing trying to work against Mack. Foul inside. As they whistled Henry, I think Banyard had position. I think Henry tried to... Oh, old trick tried to pull a chair out from under him, but Absolutely. the official saw it. I thought that that was a, a, a great call uh, from the official, for sure. So foul on Henry now is his fourth as Daniel returns for Prairie View A&M. Less than one minute to play in Montgomery. The Southern women leading Alabama State 58-53. Banyard on the wing, top of the key to Stokes back in the contest as Lynn gets inside, the floater up and rims out. Tipped up by Doss, no good, but Lynn fouls it and scores. And they will temporary stoppage in play as Doss hit the floor. Bodies flying. Good job by the officials keeping everyone safe. Lynn with the putback. 
57-27 with 14-12 remaining. As Daquan Mars returns, replacing Stredick in the Golden Lions lineup. Inbounds pass to Gambrell. He gets it out to Daniels. Gambrell, three-pointer off the mark. Follow slam by Briscoe. I thought that was a good defensive assignment on, on Gambrell, uh, for sure. Um, but we got to make sure that we're getting those rebounds and not allowing him to get second chance opportunity. 59-27. And a lot of energy from the Prairie View bench. Not sure exactly what the call was, but no foul call. But those lines will maintain possession with 13-35 remaining. Lynn draws the foul, and he will go back to the free throw line. That's exactly what we have to continue to do is attack the basket. Uh, one thing about it, though, you got you to gotta come back down the floor and get stops and not allow him to get second chance points. Lynn with six points. First free throw is good as Robert Boyd checks in for the first time, replacing Sean Dawes Jr. And Lynn gets them both. Now, Lynn has done a good job also of finding scoring opportunities. The shot's not falling beyond the three, 0 for 6 from the three-point line. Um, but still being able to, to, to make it count at the charity stripe, I think that's, that says a lot about him. We approach 13, 15 and counting. Panthers working some clock here. Crisco gets it over to Daniels on the right wing, guarded by Banyard. Good D by Terrence, out of bounds. Will remain Panthers basketball with three on the shot clock. This stop is what we need right here with three seconds left on the shot clock. Uh, being able to, to, to stop the Panthers from scoring right here will be key for us and coming down, converting it, and getting a bucket. Cox gets it in. Mack misses from the corner. Ball still loose, and Banyard comes out with the rebound for the Golden Lions. Under 13 minutes remaining. Lynn over to Boyd on the right wing. Trying to see Banyard on the right block. Double team from behind. Morris cuts to the basket. Ball knocked away. UAPB basketball with 12 on the 30. That's one thing that we've been doing a good job of is acknowledging the double team. Banyard's getting double team. You got to get somebody else to cut at the rim. Be strong with the ball, finish the layup. Inbounds pass to Lynn, out of bounds. Will remain go to line ball, now with 11 to shoot. Lynn, Stokes, Banyard, Boyd, and Morris. Your go to line, five on the floor. Banyard out top, gets it to Stokes, now with five. Driving right, draws contact, misses Morris with the putback in the basket. Second field goal for Daquan Morris, 59-31, with 12-20 remaining. Gambrell spins out, gets it to Mack at the top of the key, guarded by Stokes. Trying to piece together some consecutive stops or the Golden Lions. And that shot nearly went in by Daniels trying to draw the foul against a Banyard flying inside as Lynn gets the rebound, attacks the basket, and scores. And technical foul. Break down the particulars for you. When we come back with 11.55 remaining, Gold Lions trailing 59.33 on the UAPB Sports Network. The ideal cut round diamond was developed by a mathematician in 1919. 
the method was used to release the maximum amount of brilliance inside a diamond. That was a hundred years ago. The future is fire polished and you have to see it to believe it. Nanotechnology creates an explosion of fire that's over 300 times more brilliant. Come see the brilliant future of diamonds for yourself at Sissy's Log Cabin. Sissy's Log Cabin, because life's too short for ordinary jewelry. Hi, I'm Ford Trotter for Trotter Ford Lincoln in Pine Bluff. We believe in being tried and true. And that means earning your repeat business by giving you our best customer service and best deals every single time. Like up to $14,000 off MSRP on the 2019 F-150 Crew Cab. That's right, $14,000 off MSRP. So come see for yourself. Shop Trotter Ford Lincoln at Pine Bluff and TrotterFord.com today. Tried, true, Trotter. We salute our UAPB student-athletes who again performed exceptionally in the classroom. During the fall semester, more than 160 student-athletes earned at least a 3.0 GPA, with nearly 90 attaining at least a 3.5 GPA and 10 earning a perfect 4.0. Additionally, nearly 20 student-athletes and student-athletic staff graduated in December 2020. Congratulations to our student-athletes on a job well done. Simmons Bank has a lot of pride in Pine Bluff. It's been our home since 1903, but our goal has always remained the same, to help make our customers' dreams come true. From our headquarters downtown to more than 200 locations across eight states. That's a lot of dreams coming true, and they all started right here in Pine Bluff. Simmons Bank, Pine Bluff Proud. Happy New Year from Golden Lion Athletics. We wish you and your family a healthy and prosperous 2021 year. 11.55 remaining. Golden Lions trailing Prairie View by the score of 59 to 33. So a technical foul was called on Jalen Lynn for making contact with the ball on the attempted inbounds pass. So Gambrell at the line shooting the technical free throw and he knocks it down. Lynn has been doing a good job of getting us, getting us going offensively, leading all scores tonight so far. So just got to be a little bit more disciplined and not allow that to happen. And he liked the intensity. He's certainly trying to find a way to steal a possession, get a deflection. But got to stay beyond without making contact with the ball as the shot clock did not start. So we'll see how they will reset the game clock and the shot clock. With 11.55 now 11.47 on the game clock. And 22 on the shot clock. Game has gone final in Montgomery as Southern gives the Alabama State women its first loss with a 60 to 56 final score. This is a very competitive league on the women's side. Um, you know, I was telling our young ladies at, at one point in the season, nobody's going to go undefeated on the women's basketball side. You know, Alabama State just was able to uh, start their conference off with a win versus Jackson State. So this is this can be anybody's game, um, anybody's season uh, right now for women's basketball. And you mentioned with that Southern, the loss by Alabama State is first in conference place, and every team has at least one loss as Alabama State now falls to 4-1. and one. Southern improves to four and two. And of course now, another big matchup on Wednesday as Grambling will play in Montgomery, make up a game that was postponed to begin league play at the start of the 2021 calendar year before we head to Grambling for a 3 p.m. doubleheader on Saturday. Yeah, with, with COVID going on right now and, and, and how our teams, all teams, all teams are playing right now, you know, coaches, you just have to be thankful for have had the opportunity to have a game day. Absolutely, anytime you get to a game day, it's a good day. As the miss inside, stokes to the board for the Golden Lions. Johnson faces the three, finds Morris on the baseline, feeds Banyard, draws a contact, and Terrence Banyard back to the free throw line for the Golden Lions. 
Speaking of COVID, I thought, Dwayne, you said something about Alabama and them men are not playing again. They were scheduled to play all corn, and I believe it was all corn that had the positive test tonight. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that, in that domino effect of games now, as you get ready to head to, you know, we had, I believe it's this weekend, the final weekend of the first half for league play. So starting next weekend when we had Alabama, that starts the second half of league play. And those return matches, some of them have not happened yet. Right. It's going to be a very, very busy February. We'll try to, as we move forward, explain what the conference policy and scenario is. We know each team has to play at least 13 to be eligible for postseason play. Alabama and them men have, 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 haven't played many games. I'm not sure exactly Correct. what it is, but I know they started off missing the first four, I, I believe. Right. They only play, I believe, two to this point as Prairie View scores on the alley to make the score 62-34. Alabama and them men and Jackson State have only played two games. Wow. In conference play through the first now four weekends of league play as Joshua Johnson hits the first three of the night for the Golden Lions. That's all I, I was saying earlier to you, uh, Dwayne. You know, he does a really good job as far as uh, shooting the ball long distance. So seeing one go in, hopefully we'll see some more to follow. 62-37. Prayer View still working the ball against the Golden Lions zone. Drive by Henry off the mark. Rebound, Banyard. Johnson in the front court at the midway mark of the second half. Lynn faces three, gets to Boyd, drives inside to a cutting Morris. Reverse layup, no good. Banyard had a chance at it, ball still loose. Still loose on the floor, and Henry comes out with it for the Panthers. 9.40 and counting. Left to play here from the H.O. Clemens Arena. Prairie View has led throughout. Goes lines trailing 62-37. Mack, double team, gets it over to Roberts. Left wing three is good. Sixty-five, thirty-seven. Boyd will try to answer for the Golden Lions. Three point and two strong. Rebound, Henry. And February is going to be very exciting. We were trying to figure out possible scheduling scenarios. We've got two games to figure out on the women's side for ourselves as well as Henry cuts down the lane and scores again for Prairie View. You know, one thing about it on the women's side, I think all of the coaches, we, we've talked about it. Everybody wants to have an opportunity to make it up. Um, I think for us only to have two to make up is a little bit better. Yes. Uh, which puts us in a better situation because a lot of other teams have more than two. As Lynn draws the blocking foul with a count the basket. Absolutely. Good Counted move. for Lynn. Nice, strong move for Jalen Lynn. He now has 12. Foul called against Roberts is his first. And Doss returns for the Golden Lions, replacing Boyd. That was a good move for Lynn. I, I, I definitely have a lot of respect for his game now. It's different sitting right here, <laughs> hands uh-huh. on. You're getting, you're getting all the good stuff. But that, that, him having that move in his toolbox, that, that makes him a little bit more diverse. I like that. And a very prolific scorer in junior college. We'll need more of that as conference play evolves. Still a long way to go for both Golden Line men's and women's teams. In February, it's going to be exciting. We already talked about the Super Spring season with we already saw volleyball open this season this past weekend. Normally playing in the fall. Soccer and football will play in late February to begin their respective seasons. With so much swag basketball left, it's going to be a February to remember as well. One thing about it, you know, with us not being able to have fans right now in our indoor sports, we we really got to encourage our listeners uh, to continue to support us and follow us on Twitter uh, and all of our social media platforms because, you know, our teams definitely still want to be able to have their support and stay connected uh, with Absolutely. our community. Absolutely. Always tremendous fan support here in Golden Line Nation, in Pine Bluff, Little Rock, and beyond. As the free throw is good by Briscoe. Panthers perfect at the line tonight. Now 10 of 10 at the charity strike. And make it 11 of 11. 69-40. Still a long way to go. We saw Southern last year on the men's side 
think they were at six and five at one point. I think they won their last seven to put their way into the number two seed in the SWAG tournament. Obviously, it was not completed due to COVID. But teams can get hot any time in this league as Doss knocks down the three for the Golden Lions. His first of the night, two threes now for UAPB. Especially going into February, Dwayne, a lot of teams start playing that championship basketball. They're able to tighten up some things. They've seen everybody in the league once. <laughs> well, in a normal season. In a normal season, You've yes. You've seen everybody once, so you're a little bit more comfortable. Out of bounds, it will be Prairie View basketball when we come back with 7.41 to play. Golden Lions trailing 69-43 on the UAPB Sports Network. The 410 Lounge is open for lunch Wednesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And for happy hour Wednesday through Sunday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. The 410 Lounge, located at 303 West 31st Avenue, also features Wing Wednesday, Taco Thursday, R&B Fridays, Grown and Sexy Saturdays, and Game Night on Sundays. The 410 Lounge. Proud supporters of your Golden Lions. Simmons Bank has a lot of pride in Pine Bluff. It's been our home since 1903, but our goal has always remained the same, to help make our customers' dreams come true. From our headquarters downtown to more than 200 locations across eight states. That's a lot of dreams coming true, and they all started right here in Pine Bluff. Simmons Bank. Pine Bluff Proud. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. <laughs> now I'm so happy. One remaining. Men's basketball trailing 69-43. Quick ball movement and the dunk inside for the Panthers. Briscoe this time with the slam. Golden Lions shot the ball better in the second half. 8 of 17 at 47%. Minus 8 right now in second half scoring. Trailing 71-43. Doolittle over to Stokes in the far corner. Back to, to Trevante who gets inside, shot the glass up and in. First points for Trevante Doolittle. 71-45, under seven minutes to play. Cox in the right wing feeds Henry on the right block. Good D by Doss, but finds a cutting Gambrell, who could not convert. Johnson in the front court. Pulls up for three. Rims out. Ball out of bounds. Stokes and Banyard both had a chance. Could not corral it out of bounds to the Panthers. That was a great look um, to the basket for, for that shot. You know, just wanting that to be able to fall. Tonight's not a great shooting night for us, so we got to keep attacking the basket. As Mack returns for Prairie View a &M, replacing Cox. 6.35 remaining here from the H.O. Clemens Arena. Golden Line women's and men's basketball on the road the next two weekends at Grambling Saturday, 3 p.m. doubleheader at Jackson State a week from tonight and a 5.30 p.m. doubleheader before a trip to Alabama for games at Alabama State and Alabama A&M. Follow it all right here on the UAPB Sports Network. Knocked away into the hands of Stokes. Up here to Doolittle. Off the glass, too strong. Rebound out of bounds. It will be Panthers basketball. 
Doolittle has done a good job as, as far as coming in and, and looking to attack, trying to draw a foul. You got to finish those layups. Under six minutes to play. And we talked about it early and unfortunately often. Those point blank shots, you get them at close range. It's hard to be 100%, but you want to be at least the old school Ivory Soap 99 and 44 100s inside that arc. Now, how most called you coach, Dwayne? You sound like <laughs> a coach right there. You definitely want to take those high percentage shots in the paint. Knocked away, Preview Carrazzi once again. Panthers still attack. Henry, reverse layup off the glass, up and in. 73 45, 520 remaining. Pass out of bounds, and it will be Prairie View basketball as Jalen Lynn returns, replacing Stokes for UAPB. 520 remaining. Panthers have led throughout. And we found more of the shooting touch in the second half. Unable to put a dent in the deficit. We were down 20 at the half. As a traveling violation prior to the shot, it will be go to line basketball. As Bell returns, replacing Trevante Doolittle. The good men's for Trevante. Two points, two rebounds, and an assist in eight minutes. You know, one thing about it, I don't. I really don't know how, how others view it, but me being a coach sitting here on the sideline with you, five minutes is a lot of basketball left to play. So if you just take one possession at a time to keep chipping, uh, you, can, you can put yourself in a situation to give yourself a shot. Banyard fouled. I believe it was... Panther foul. Against Ngigal. That will lead to free throws for Banyard. Front in the one and one, knocks down the first. A good game for Terrence Banyard. Now with eight points, seven rebounds. As Stretic returns, replacing. Doss for the Golden Lions. Four, 46 remaining. As you mentioned, still a lot of time. Anything can happen if you put a couple of good offensive and defensive possessions together. Yeah, again, getting the ball in Banyard's hand is, is some things that, that we have to do. They were double teaming on them earlier. We were hitting a slasher coming down in the paint, uh, which frees him back up for, for some other opportunities. So for him to be able to, to um, get to the free throw line is something big for us right now. We need that. 73-47. Out of bounds. Panthers basketball. We'll go to line basketball with 428 to play. And again, just takes a little bit of a spark. A three in the stop. Three in the stop. ODO. Offense, defense, offense. Gotta get a stop. Lynn on the wing over the Banyard screen. Now at the top of the key with 15 to shoot. Over to Johnson. Left wing three. Good. His second three of the night, 73-50. Four minutes to play. See if we can chip away maybe five, six points a minute. They're going to slow it down, as you would expect them to do with the big lead in 350 to play. Free throw line jumper for Mack off the mark. Rebound, Lynn. Up good. ahead to Johnson. Good contest from Johnson. Um, I thought he does a good job. He has a heart of a lion. I just, I just, I love this kid, this young man. I'm sorry. Gets inside, <laughs> could not convert again. Unfortunately, another point blank miss mm -hmm. with a cut it to 21. 320 and counting in this second half. Matt gets inside the floater up. No good. Banyard comes out with the board, his eighth. Up ahead to Johnson, trying to feed Bell. Brings the top of the key to Lynn. Now Stredick on the left baseline. Finds a cutting Bell, lost it, got it back. Feeds Banyard inside off the glass. Strong move, no good. Tipped in by Stredick. Absolutely, that was good. That was a good three-man ball right there. Definitely, you know, Bell getting his other teammates involved and then for a rebound put back. 
Haven't said much tonight, but we'll continue to say that good things happen when you cut to the basket. That second, mm-hmm. third effort relay resulted in the basket for us, 73-52, two and a half remaining. Panthers now running some clock. Shot clock at two, jumper by Cox, short, rebound Bell. Up ahead to Lynn, now Johnson. B. Stradick on the right block, pass deflected, out of bounds, golden line ball. When we come back with 208 to play, UAPB trailing 73-52 on the Golden Lions Sports Network. Dear Adidas, we believe that through sport, we have the power to change lives. A female coaching me. Is anybody watching female sports? Pull us against them. But female athletes are being left behind. We have the power to make a new world for female athletes. So come together, fight for equality, and level the field to ensure that no matter the challenge ahead, she breaks barriers. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the pride. The ideal cut round diamond was developed by a mathematician in 1919. The method was used to release the maximum amount of brilliance inside a diamond. That was 100 years ago. The future is fire polished and you have to see it to believe it. Nanotechnology creates an explosion of fire that's over 300 times more brilliant. Come see the brilliant future of diamonds for yourself at Sissy's Log Cabin. Sissy's Log Cabin, because life's too short for ordinary jewelry. What's with Mountain Dew? Mountain Dew is like a zip line of incredible flavor directly into your brain. Mountain Dew is like getting punched in the mouth with pure neon refreshment that creates a neural explosion sending flavor shards of electric brain pulses into your very core of being. Okay, maybe that's a little over the top, but you get the idea. The fact is, the mind-bending challenge of describing the taste of Mountain Dew is way harder than just experiencing it. That, of course, is easy. Just grab an ice cold dew, crack it open, and toss them back. Mountain Dew. Do the dew. Two oh eight remaining. Men's basketball trailing seventy three fifty two. Inbounds pass to Johnson, and the clock did not start. So reset to 205. It's been a busy weekend. We had men's basketball action Saturday. We had volleyball Sunday afternoon. We had volleyball Monday afternoon. We had men's basketball Monday night. And about 35 to 45 minutes, let Coach Brown get back to her regular job. Women's basketball is going to take the floor for Monday night practice. As Banyard misses inside, rebound Prairie View. So an unfortunate, unscheduled kind of mid-season by what's been the focus and getting ready to get back in the road for Grambling on Saturday. You know what? Um, this has been a really great opportunity for us to get back in the classroom, watch some film. Um, you know, us having... 30-plus turnovers versus all corn. We were able to break down every segment um, of, of the type of different presses that we're going to see moving forward. As Johnson knocks down his third three of the night, he now has 12. So 55 final minute 15. Absolutely. So we're just going to have an opportunity to, to, to learn, get back to the basics. So this has been really good for us. Stay with us for Lions Roar post game presented by the 410 Lounge. We'll have your coach's corner post game interview brought to you by the Neely Law Firm. Final minute here from the H.O. Clemens Arena. Offensive foul, goes line basketball. And you try to find the small things in contests like this. We shot it better in the second half. We've outscored them in the second half. Things to build on as the men as well get ready to hit the road. 
for Grambling on Saturday afternoon. You know, one thing as a coach you have to do is you have to put this game behind you after tonight. You know, you can go back and watch the film and move forward. Um, you know, us having an opportunity to play Saturday, Mondays, you can't hold on for it too long. Correct. Uh, and you got to be ready to, to focus on the next one. As Bell fouled on the drive by Matt. And that is his second. Forty point nine to play. And for all his effort and his energy, this is Bell's first shot attempt tonight. Field goal or free throw. And certainly we'll need more from him going forward. Certainly this four-game road trip ahead as Bell makes the second, 73-56. You know, one thing about Bell, I have to give him credit. He did a really great job my first time watching him play some last year. You know, when you're in a slump and you're in a funk, you're only going to stay in it as long as you you, you, you decide that you're going to stay in it. So Correct. whatever he's going through, you guys shake it off and be ready to play because he is capable of helping this team be successful. Long three air ball by Gambrell with 20.3 seconds remaining. As Henry will return, replacing Gambrell. So Johnson will bring the basketball into the front court. Final 10 seconds here from the H.O. Clemens Arena. Lynn. On the right wing, drives inside, misses, rebound Henry, and that will do it. Your final score, Prairie Green M73, UAPB 56. Lions Roar postgame presented by the 410 Lounge is next on the UAPB Sports Network. Ten Lounge is open for lunch Wednesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and for happy hour Wednesday through Sunday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. The 410 Lounge, located at 303 West 31st Avenue, also features Wing Wednesday, Taco Thursday, R&B Fridays, Grown and Sexy Saturdays, and Game Night on Sundays. The 410 Lounge. Proud supporters of your Golden Lions. I am attorney Ephraim Neely of the Neely Law Firm, where I provide excellent legal service at an affordable rate. I practice criminal, domestic relations, and personal injury work. My office is located at 1514 South Poplar Street, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. The telephone number is 870-536-9336. That's 870-536-9336. As a graduate of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, I support the Golden Lion and Lead Department in all its endeavors. Who are you rooting for? Simmons Bank has a lot of pride in Pine Bluff. It's been our home since 1903. But our goal has always remained the same, to help make our customers' dreams come true. From our headquarters downtown to more than 200 locations across eight states. That's a lot of dreams coming true. And they all started right here in Pine Bluff. Simmons Bank. Pine Bluff Proud. What's with Mountain Dew? Mountain Dew is like a zip line of incredible flavor directly into your brain. Mountain Dew is like getting punched in the mouth with pure neon refreshment that creates a neural explosion sending flavor shards of electric brain pulses into your very core of being. Okay, maybe that's a little over the top, but you get the idea. The fact is, the mind-bending challenge of describing the taste of Mountain Dew is way harder than just experiencing it. That, of course, is easy. Just grab a nice cold dew, crack it open, and toss them back. Mountain Dew. Do the dew. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of 